Hi, this is Scott Morris, and this is part two of my little thing here on warming up and technique based on my book, Classical Guitar Complete, Volume 1. And uh, what I covered in part one of this uh, little mini series here of videos, um, arpeggios. And I talked about how I always warm up with arpeggios first, and also the importance of warming up. All the reasons, you know, why you need to take some time, not, not just to get better at certain techniques, but also to really warm your hands up so you don't hurt yourself um, in, the, uh, in the process of playing. Maybe not in one day, but, you know, over time, not warming up can really be a bad thing for your hands. A lot of players get uh, terrible things like, uh, you know, focal dystonias and tendonitis and carpal tunnel. And, you know, occasionally people's hands just explode into flames. It's, it's, uh, it's terrifying. So this part, I'm going to talk about scales and what you should be doing when you practice your scales, a little bit about the different types of scales you could be practicing, and uh, some suggestions on uh, maybe how long you should be, uh, should be practicing your scales as well. So the important thing is to cover why scale practice is so important. And the, the main reason why we practice scales is for synchronization. Unlike arpeggios, you know, even when you're you know, holding chords down, really one hand is doing more work. The other hand may not be completely stationary, but it's it's certainly doing you know less work than the other. So synchronization isn't as much of an issue. But with scales, you know, every note requires your left hand and your right hand to be perfectly together. And that's what synchronization is. So, you know, getting those hands to work together. And this is a really important thing to do when you warm up because if you start to get those hands working together, you'll have more legato playing, more fluid playing in your pieces, which uh, will come later in the practice session. So, you know, I don't like to, you know, sit down and immediately start, you know, you know burning through, you know, fast scales. That's uh, going to defeat the purpose, although guitar players love to do that sort of thing. What I like to do is I sit down. And usually do like a one, two, three, four thing, so sort of like a, like a quasi-chromatic exercise here. You know, depending on how much time I have, you know, I might start you know down on you know the low sixth string and go all the way up and then back down and go all the way up the neck and all the way back down. But you know, just today, because doing kind of a you know quick version here, just to give you an idea of the different things you could be doing, I'll just uh, focus on the top three strings. So what I'm thinking about here is playing legato and playing relaxed. I want to make sure that my hands are in position. So my right hand here, I'll do rest strokes, mostly when I practice scales. Doing an I am alternation, although I like to use an I A alternation as well. I also recommend you practice M A and you know all the different patterns. Actually, if you look at the Segovia scales, he gives you all those different patterns. And uh, that's great, you know, even if you don't use all of those different patterns when you practice, what you're doing is you're working out all the different parts of your hand. Um, the least used but the most beneficial to developing your right hand is an M-A scale alternation. And that feels awful to do. I mean, nobody, nobody likes to, you know, do that M-A uh, scale pattern there. But it's great for your right hand because it works on a part of the hand that most people don't, don't really develop. But just sort of sticking with, you know, like an I am or an I A here. Okay, so how do we really make sure we're playing in sync, you know, one hand after the next? There are a couple little exercises you can do here. One thing I really like to do is this exercise where you practice putting down one finger the same time as the other. So if you're just like a one, two, three, four, and I am, I am, you know, I pluck I. And I'm holding down the third string here at the first fret with one. And then I'm going to plant, mention that in part one of this uh, little series here. I'm going to plant M, and I'm going to put two down on the second fret at exactly the same time. And you can even stop on that. And you pluck, and you plant I and three, and then you plant uh, M and four, and you just kind of go through like that. That is going to make sure your hands work really well together. A couple other little things to consider here. Um, 
when I move from the first finger to the second finger, and this is true when you're when you're playing, you know, diatonic scales as well. It's really important that you relax the first finger here when two goes down. Um, you know, uh, when I was taught, I was always told to, to think of that as shifting weight from the first finger to the second finger, and then from the third, rather from the second to the third, and then the third to the fourth. There, so you're not holding down all four fingers there. That's a waste of energy and not such a good thing. One other thing to consider here before I start getting into uh, maybe like a C major scale, something like that, is this. Watch my left hand and watch what I do when I move from one string to the next. So when I play fourth finger here, look what my first finger does. My first finger immediately goes to get ready for the next string. Um, that's called finger preparation. So I'm preparing the next finger. It's not down yet because um, you know I want to synchronize that with my right hand. Then I put it down, but it'll just get right into place right when I need it. And then same thing here. So that's sort of like a basic thing to, to think about here when you're practicing your scales. Some other things you can do to practice synchronization, you know, to make it even more challenging. dotted rhythms, things like that. It's like a slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast. Um, it's a nice sort of in-between rather than just suddenly playing fast. Doing speed bursts, you know, little things like that. Those are, those are fantastic to do. Um, you know, another thing, you know, you can do with these little chromatic scales is use them for shifting, which is a really important one. You know, for instance, Segovia scales, diatonic scales, but, you know, those are mostly for shifting. You, know, you have all these you know, shifts in there. Maybe a good way to start practicing shifting is just with simple chromatic scales. I'll come back to that in a minute. But what I'd like to do is give you a couple specific exercises in my book, starting on page 58, um, sorry, 78. This is exercise 8.1. It's just a simple C major one octave scale. You know, and you can easily, you know, continue on. I call pattern two in my book, or you know, if you want to bring a shift into that, maybe with like Segovia C major, doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter what scales exactly you practice for this, so long as you're practicing your scales in an intelligent way. So here, I practice that play relax technique with the preparation, and you get something like this. So I start with two. And I pluck with I. I'm kind of using an IA uh, scale here. Kind of feels good for my right hand at the moment. And then I, then I plant my A finger, or your M finger if you want to use that, and four. And then my first finger immediately goes to that E on the fourth string. So you're really getting that preparation in, and you're also enforcing that or reinforcing uh, that synchronization issue there. And there are a lot of different ways you can practice synchronization and you know, I cover that in planting in my book for, for several pages. A couple other things you might want to consider here, just you know, practicing simple scales. You might want to practice doing arpeggio, doing uh, triplet uh, patterns, uh, you know, sometimes I'll go and practice like groups of five, groups of six, you know, all these different things just to uh, kind of mix it up a little bit here. Um, now, let's, let's get back to shifting because, you know, I think this is really important. And uh, the first thing I'll do here are some single string shifts. You know, it's kind of going these like, you know, first position, fifth position, ninth position here on the first string, but you practice these on all six strings. Let me do the first one here on the first string and show you what to, to think about here. Then we can bring that in to a di diatonic scale. So, now right here, I'm going to get ready for that shift. So I'm going to look at the fifth fret and then just bring my hand to it. I'm going to look at the ninth fret and bring my hand to it. And then as you descend, you're going to look at that fret and bring your pinky to it. Look at the fourth fret, bring your pinky to it. Now, your goal here should be maintain a good hand position as you move up, 
play relax in the right hand, and then most importantly, your shifts need to be nice and clean. My goal with shifting is always to make it sound like there's no shift. Um, there are a couple things that could go wrong with shifts, just, just briefly here. One is to kind of cut that last note off. You choke it because you're worried about the shift. And you go up. You don't want that. That's not very musical. Um, the other thing you might do is... You don't lift your pinky quick enough. So you get that little drag there. Don't want that either. And then the other thing, the more subtle thing that some people do, they don't even know they're doing it. They over accent on the shift because they're kind of nervous about it. That always seems to be connected to the to the to the neck and the head as well. They always do this. I'm not sure what the connection is there. But you know, all of that just sort of looks like it takes a lot of effort. So what you want to do is relax on those shifts. So when you bring this into a scale, like that little shift right there, the famous one from Segovia 1. Nice and clean. Anticipate the shift and go through all of your scales, all of the different finger combinations. Um, practice planting, practice speed bursts, practice all the little rhythmic variations you can think of. Um, it's also cool, I think, you know, especially with more and more composers these days writing music with you know, influences outside of the traditional classical. Like there are a lot of pieces written that might use, use pentatonic or, you know, blues scales, um, you know, all sorts of different things. I might recommend a really kind of hard to find book Leo Brower wrote on scales. And it's, it's a classical method just on scales, but you know, what he does is he treats it almost like a jazz book. So he, he talks about pentatonic scales and diminished scales, you know, you know, half whole, whole half, whole tone scales. All these different things. It's really cool. Blues scales. Um, you, don't, you don't see that in your, your average classical guitar uh, uh, method book. But it, uh, it's very useful you know, these days if you're playing a lot of contemporary music because you're likely to play a lot of different scales that aren't just your typical major minor scales. So practice your scales. Spend a certain amount of time you know, each day. I would say you know, I would spend at least a half an hour, if not an hour, on scales every single day. Segovia says two, so, you know, maybe that's how much, I don't know. Uh, important thing is, every day, so you don't have to cram once a week. See you in the next video, and happy practicing.